The good thing about SQL I was saying is we have these database objects. So we, sorry, file, it's just like one file you can move around and that's basically your entire database contained in there. Um, we are going to feed some data for this database because of course it's kind of useless without any data. So we're going to use initial data.sql. Um, this command is just taking the database file from your database and it's just like feeding the SQL inside here, whatever it was, we first get it like the schema and then we, we provide the data. So now we have a working database and we can just check the code we receive. We have sample five. So let's see what we have. It's pretty much the same example as before. We have, if we start from the outside part, we have here this authors of HTML file, that's our template, which is located right here. Have the list of authors, we have three authors, we are accessing them step by step. And the important part is how we reach or how we read these authors, all right? So when, when the application I mean, we have this view defined, right? That first connects to the database. And this is something, when I told you guys on step one, I think, that you had all that you needed to create a real working website, I meant it. In this case, all this is just Python code. There is no magic, there is no flask magic in here. What we're doing here is we're just connecting to a database that I could do it just directly in here. Oh, more con flask. Uh, I am connecting, so I import SQLite three, SQLite three that connect to library dot database to db oh sorry db so this is my connection and then i am executing some sql right the same thing so what i meant by this is that this is not flask magic it's something that i can do it's just python by itself you know i can just instantiate SQLite right here. And then we are creating this author's dictionary, right? This is a, maybe a complicated uh, line because this this related to how SQLite works and most databases, how they all work with this notion of a cursor. So we execute this query and the, the, the results are not available instantly. We have to retrieve them one by one because this is something related, this is similar to how generators or iterators work. When you have, you know, for performance issues, of course, if you have a, a huge list of something and you can use a generator, right? Like to generate each element at a time instead of creating a huge list, this is the same example. So this cursor right here, I have just executed this, qu this query but what I get is the cursor. So the, the, what I have to do is do the fetch one or fetch all methods or different methods in, in the cursor. And what I get is this notion of uh, this tuple, right? In the first position, position zero, I got the ID of the author one in this case, and I create a dictionary with ID and name in this case. So what I'm going to do is show you guys what this line means right here and create a new cursor and authors is just creating this dictionary sorry this list of dictionaries right one dictionary per author and then basically i am passing the authors to the authors template and here i want to show you 
that this Shinsha code is pretty powerful, right? I have this author's list and I am, I am not using a for loop on purpose. I can just access the end element here. So in this case, I have end element here. I have the element, the authors, the author, sorry, in the first position, position zero and getting the ID later, right? So I am accessing a list and then I'm accessing a key. This ID thing is the key from the dictionary, all right? So again, pretty powerful engine. And that's basically it. Questions about it? I'm just one quick pass at BDC because you had the author zero and so on and so forth, rather than in which you manually put in. We, was that just for just more as to show us that that can be done? Or is there a reason why to do that instead of the for author in for for author and authors blah blah blah? No, no, yeah, it's just to show you guys how that that you can access a list and a dictionary. Um, the next and the next example actually does the the for loop. But but this is pretty cool, right? Like accessing a list, accessing a dictionary, it's something interesting. I don't know if the dot ID thing works. Let me break it. I don't remember. I think that Django has that note notation. Yeah, it does. So maybe it looks it looks better to the dot ID instead of accessing with ID. Anyway, moving forward. What happens, so what you guys will start seeing in your own code is that you will end up doing a lot of things for the same things for every request or for every different view, right? So if we have a second, let's call this authors, list authors, we have a second view that is something like list books. Right, and we do ID title from book, right? We have something like this. There are a few things that are repetitive, right? This one, this create connection, we first connect to a database, then we execute the query, then we format the data in a better way, and finally we render the template. This thing right here is going to be repeated in a lot of requests or views, sorry, in a lot of views because pretty much every view out there will need a database connection. So we're going to see how to refactor this so we don't have to include this repeated line all the time. Um, question. Yep. The reason why you can, is it possible to use just one connection that's shared among all of them? Um, it is possible, but it's not something that you will take care of manually in your code. Usually you, you delegate that, that um, work to a connection pool. You know, usually it's handled by a third party, uh, not a third party, but, a, but it's not something that you're going to do manually right here. You will use the same interface, connect to a database. You know, it's like you will request a connection to a database. How? that connection was given to you, if it was just brand new, you know, created right there, it's a fresh connection, or, with, or it was a connection that was reused, um, you will not care about it in your code. You wanna abstract that away from your mind. It's like, I just want an, a connection to a database. How you give it to me, usually we'll deal with this. I don't know if SQLite 3. Okay, thank you. I don't know if there is a way to do connection pooling in SQLite, to be honest. Uh, connection. Factory cached statement, this factory thing. I don't know, something to check out also. Um, but yeah, it's in, in every major like web application, you will want to reuse connections and don't be creating new connections for every request. So 
the way what we said, we had two different views, but, but both of them are doing the same thing at the beginning. This can be anything. This can be checking if the current user is logged in, checking the user engine to detect if the, if the request came from a robot or from a legitimate user, can like, check if what country the IP that requested the page is from. You know, a lot of things that you're doing at the beginning of your processing. So we have a nice addition, which is called the before request hook, right? So you just say in your app, before request, and whatever you put right here will be executed before every request made for your views, all right? So what we do here is before every request, we will create a database connection, all right? And we are going to check, for a second, this connect DB is the same one as we have right here. And again, this is connect database. The result is basically the DB connection. We're basically doing the same here. And let me change the name. Maybe it's better to do this. There you go. So the code looks like. So what we're doing is we're creating this database connection and we are storing it in a, this she thing right here. This she thing is a poorly object or poorly named object by Flask that lets you share code between different functions. And I don't wanna get into much detail about it. I don't wanna bore you if you wanna talk about it, it's fine. Um, but basically, all, all these are different functions. We could have done something like before request and have something like DV connection gone. And before the request, we set the connection, right? And then the, oh, sorry, then the actual view would use this connection. The truth is that we cannot create global objects and access them because there are, a f there are servers that will use threads to manage application instead of separate processes, all right? And this is maybe a more advanced topic. It deals with concurrency. But if you guys have threaded environments, you know, different threads as, as concurrency mechanism, you will have race conditions, all right? It's a complicated, not a, not a complicated topic, but a more advanced topic. It deals with concurrency. Um, the issue is that you have different threads working together. They will all step into these like DB connection and rewriting it and you will have unexpected results. So the, the important part here is that if we, have a before request hook, or we, sorry, we need a before request hook, we create it, and we want to share something between the hook and the, 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 the view that will be executed after that hook, we need to use the she object. Terrible name, she has a she, but that's the global object by Flask. All right, if you guys have to do something that doesn't, like you don't need to share the code or something between these two functions. You just, for example, need to check if it's a robot or something and just fail it, you can do it right there. But if you need to share between these two views, you will need to um, use the she object. Santiago, yep. we, can, we can add anything we want there? Yes, pretty much. Yep. And what, what is the life the lifetime of that object? Just just for the request. Whenever this request finishes, the the she object will die and it will be cleared out. Uh, it will it it just for one request. Also, I mean, you have two clients right executing right pretty much at the same time. Uh, they will see different things. I mean, the she object will not be shared among those to among those those two requests, it will just belong to one request. 
Make sense? Yes, it does. <clears throat> cool. All right, questions about this? Great. So finally, we have here a simple example to show you guys a conditional right here because we just saw for loops. It's just a conditional like you do in Python. I believe there is also an elif statement. We should double check. But the code right here is pretty much the same one as the previous one, but it's just using a conditional. And basically here we are doing, so if we want to include, let me go back to the previous example right here. We have ID, name, country, ID from author. I'm going to create also here country equals row two. And database app is using authors with template engine. Which one I'm using? Authors, authors with template engine. And I want to add here the country that this author belongs to. So I'm going to do all add country. What I get are the IDs of these countries, right? Because if you guys remember the structure of our, of our, of our database, the author had a reference to the country, right? It's just an ID. Um, and that's why we see this number right here. If we want to, of course, start mixing data, we will need to use the showing Right, SQL statement. I don't know how to call it, um, but it's basically a mechanism to join different tables, so we can reference. You know, it's like the author, the the i the country ID in the table author is referencing the a particular country in the table country. You know, so that's basically what we do here. We create we have author with an alias of a joined with country with an alias of C, joined where? On the country ID of the author is basically the ID of the country. So if we check this example out, we will see. Uh, let me check the code. Uh, we are doing pretty much the same thing here. We're going to see the countries. This is some nice thing to show you guys. Um, of course, this is something dealing with database. It's out of our scope, but just for you to know. <laughs>